What's good everyone? Welcome back to the Strong Sisters YouTube channel. In today's video, we are going to be talking about constipation in the context of the carnivore, keto, or low carb diet. We get asked about poop a lot. We're here for the poop talk, all right, folks? <laughs> so I think one thing that's important to remember is that when you make a huge dietary change, it will take a long time for your digestion to re-regulate. And this experience is going to be different for everyone. We all have such different gut pasts. We all ate so differently in the past that we can't expect everyone's experience to be the same. For example, we both had very different experiences. When I switched to the carnivore diet from a very plant-based keto diet, I went, 21. That's right. 21. Days without pooping. <laughs> My stomach hurts. Whereas she that. had a different experience. Yeah, I had the very typical runs in the bathroom. So it just shows how we're all very different because we've always eaten a very similar diet, yet our gut microbiomes responded completely differently to shifting our diets. So I think that's kind of the first point to keep in mind is Give your body some time to let your gut re-regulate to this new way of eating. And that could be a few months. That could ultimately be like up to a year. It will depend and vary person to person. But if it's been some time and you're still dealing with the poops, you're still stuck, literally. <laughs> Here are nine tips for somebody following a keto or carnivore or low carb diet that is dealing specifically with constipation. So the first tip is to experiment with your fat to protein ratio. So a few weeks ago, we decided to try out a higher protein carnivore diet approach. Like much higher than what we were used to. More on like the 55 to 60% fat. So significantly lower fat percentage than what we were used to. And so you see a lot of people doing this, like Dr. Sean Baker, Kevin Stock, Danny Vega. And so it works for some people, Yeah. right? But for us, we noticed we went backwards with our digestion with that higher protein intake. It led to a little bit more bloating, definitely more constipation. I was constipated. No. <laughs> We're definitely constipated. So that is something to potentially experiment with. Maybe try to up your fat percentage. We personally have found our sweet spot is somewhere in the 70 to 75% fat percentage for eliminating constipation and for the good poops. Yes. Yep. Second thing you can experiment with in your diet to help relieve constipation is the amount of slow cooked meats you're eating versus a little bit less cooked meats. So like your degree of cooking yes. for your meats. I know that sounds weird, but tell them what's up. So we've had a few clients in the past who when they really relied and had a lot of slow cooked meats, so for example like brisket every single meal every single day. The good stuff. The good stuff. Or like slow cooked chuck, so everything's like fully cooked meat. They noticed an increase in their constipation, and I noticed this as well. That's one of the reasons why we like to limit our slow-cooked meat consumption. There's nothing inherently wrong with slow-cooked meats. It's just I notice a negative effect on my digestion. So potentially consume more meats that are like, you can do light sears and less of the slow-cooked meats if this is something that you're dealing with. To be honest, we don't really know why this is the case. It could be some histamine issue because slower cooked, more cooked meats are going to have higher histamine levels. So you could experiment with this by consuming more light sear cooked meats or by increasing your DAO consumption, which will help with the histamine issue if you're dealing with histamine. You also could be the flip side and have digestion issues if you eat less cooked meats. I would, I mean, I don't know that for a fact, but I would just say this is something you could consider experimenting with as always. Yeah. I, I don't know, I would argue that people have seen improved digestion with less cooked meats. So like, I don't know. But yeah, I mean, I'm sure people have, but on the same token, I'm sure that somebody has a hard time breaking down the less cooked meats. It's another tool that you can experiment Didn't I just with say that? to optimize your carnivore diet. I just said that. Okay, moving on. Number three is to consider your meal spacing. So what we mean by this is like OMAD, one meal a day, or TMAD, two meals a day, or three mad, three meals a day. So potentially your gut is just not able to properly break down all of the nutrients in large meals. So if you have, if you are constipated and you are currently doing OMAD, try to space out your food a little bit. Do a little bit more increase in meals. Yeah. Something to try. It, there's like a lot to consider here because a reason people do do <laughs> OMAD is to give their digestive system a break 
which does do a lot for your digestion as a whole. They like to incorporate that fasting, that fasting. So that is one end of the spectrum, but like she said, perhaps you're somebody who right now your gut actually can't digest all that food at once. So for you to get all your calories in, you have to eat a pretty significant amount in one meal. Can I sing? So you could experiment, go for it. So let's cue Hannah Montana, ready? We get the best of both worlds. So you could still incorporate fasting, but not doing a daily OMAD by incorporating one 24 hour fast a week. So yeah, that way you're still getting that fasting. And then the rest of the days of the week, maybe space out your meals a little bit. I was really not understanding where the song was coming yeah. in, but I get it now. Yeah. Okay. All credits, Sienna Montana, don't copyright us. Okay. Next tip is meal timing. So this obviously falls in line with like if you're doing OMAD or TUMAD or whatever. Whenever you're eating your meals, consider how close it is to bedtime. We've noticed that we do not seem to digest our food as well when we're eating super close to our bedtime. So within that hour window of when we're gonna go to bed, sometimes our schedules just lead us to this and we can't eat up until getting close to bed. But it's unfortunate we go to bed feeling a little murky. Yeah. A and little full, we notice our sleep is impacted, which also can impact your digestion. Basically, this can be summarized as like, your circadian rhythm matters. Your body operates on its own internal timing. And it turns out that some of your body's digestive enzymes are shut off closer to your bedtime, so your body will be less efficient as at digesting your food if it's super close to bedtime. We have had a few clients who have seen success moving their food window up so that way they're finished eating two to three hours before they go to sleep. That something just like simple like that, adjusting your meal timing window could be the key. The key to improving your digestion. So we used to be super against the whole like, <gasps> don't eat carbs past 8 p.m. Uh, yeah. And I mean, that's, that's still silly to an, ex an extent, but at the same time, you don't need that banana at 8 p.m. <laughs> like. I mean, unless you're about to go hit another workout, yeah. I think your body will be fine without it. Yeah. It's, just, it's amazing how like your mindset on food shifts over time. Yeah. <sighs> we used to be all about those carbs after dark, uh, trying to like prove a point, but all we ended up was, was just like a lot of fat. digestion issues yeah. the next day. And I was kind of fat. Yeah. You got a little chunky. I did. If you can believe it, I have weighed 50 pounds heavier than I am now, even though I, I rarely show those photos. So. I We've was, been on both ends of the spectrum, so that's why we feel comfortable talking about both ends of the spectrum. I just don't want anybody to be like, you don't know what it's like to be fat. Ugh. I what? Google, I grew we were up, Chunk. Chunk Masters 3000s. <laughs> Moving on. All right, tip number five. We have talked about this before, but it's considering your rendered fat oh, yes. intake. So there's nothing wrong with rendered fats. As a preface. What, rendered fats are like tallow, butter, the, the liquid fats. So it's basically like animal fat that's been melted down and then has re-solidified. So tallow, ghee, butter. That's pretty bacon much. Bacon grease. Bacon grease. So that's rendered fats. And we, when we started the carnivore diet, we like to take a high fat approach. So we didn't really know about raw animal fat sources. So we were just like pounding down this rendered fat. And so this may have been one of the reasons why I had such bad constipation issues at the start of my carnivore diet experiment. Pause though. Okay. I didn't have constipation issues. I had the runs. I had diarrhea and I was doing a lot of rendered fats. So like we were saying, it might be different for you. Yeah. But consider your rendered fat intake. We typically tell people you should prop, if you're eating a high fat diet, you should probably prioritize those raw animal fat sources such as suet, bone marrow, Egg yolks, help me out, what else is there? Uh, just like the beef trimmings in general. Yeah, beef trimmings, fattier cuts of steak, pork belly, bacon, so. Duck yolks. Duck yolks, yeah, so prioritizing those and instead use those rendered fats for like cooking. So for example, we cook our eggs in our steak in butter every, every single day, but we don't like take a spoonful of like a few spoonfuls Spoon of butter and put it on our plates. The medicine. Y'all have seen our platas. Instead, we throw on mounds of raw beef suet because that improves our digestion, makes our tummy feel better. Tip number six to consider, and this applies to all diets, is liquid intake and timing. So the amount of liquid that you're consuming around your meal times. For example, if you're eating at four o'clock and you finish, you smug your meal and it's 4.05, right? You finish your meal. 
very fast paced and then you just down a bottle of sparkling water guilty i have done this. that is going to impact your digestion first off um sparkling water it's some sparkling water is high in sodium bicarbonate and there's some information regarding this where that will neutralize the stomach acid which could impair digestion if you just think about your gut and you think about stomach or food sitting in your stomach and then just putting a whole lot of water into that probably not a good idea can you imagine it's just now swimming and that's going to make it a lot harder for your body to focus on digesting the food so again just something to experiment with Consider like moving your liquid consumption further back after you finish and meal. beforehand. Don't like just completely get rid of everything. I would say a safe bet is like 30 minutes to an hour before and after your meal. Just avoid the liquids. They also, a lot of people don't recommend consuming liquid with your food either. Yeah. So just keep this in mind. Just separate maybe. Just separate them up. All right, tip number seven is your activity level so if you are experiencing constipation and you're not exercising you're not moving throughout the day that could be one of the reasons why your body's just kind of just chilling there and it doesn't really have a need to move it through necessarily yeah so you guys may know that we've started to incorporate uh some zone two cardio and i almost like feel like my body like moves stuff through when I'm doing cardio. Yeah, when you run, there's actually some information that says that you push, your organs are pushing stuff down. Yeah. So you, it might feel really uncomfortable to you. Like, I have some of my runs, I can actually hear the gurgling, and I know that I'm running too close to my meal time. So I would actually just recommend taking, like, a 10-minute post-meal digestion walk. Yeah. So just walking for a little bit after you eat instead of just sitting there, you're going to feel better. Increase those activity levels. Number eight is probably an obvious one, stress. If you're stressed out, you might have a harder time going to the bathroom. It's almost just like a fact of life. Yeah. Your body is going to have a harder time doing normal processes, including working through your digestion. So take a chill pill, chillax. Do what you can for some stress-reducing activities. Yeah, and that's where walking can come into play, doing some yoga or meditating. Breathing. Breathing into the fullness and breathing into your stomach ache actually can really help just centering your focus on that area in a peaceful, calming way instead of being agitated that you're feeling bloated or you're backed up. Consider the stress. All right, and tip number nine may not apply to a lot of people, but it certainly applies to these girls, and that is your bone consumption. Oh. So we like to munch on bones after making bone broth. So for example, like little chicken bones are super soft after they've been sitting in broth for 24 hours and they're a great source of calcium and boron, but you don't need that much to get those nutrients in. And so we have found when we like over consume those. So like when there's just an endless supply and we just stand chicken there and bones. consume them, we notice an increase in constipation the next couple of days. We actually came to this correlation because when we moved our dogs to a raw food diet, the suggestion was if they had loose stools to feed them more bones. And but then if they we, had we white. overfed them bones and then they were constipated and yeah. the poop was white. So yeah. we were like, maybe that's why it's happening to me. <laughs> so this may not apply to you if you're not a bone eater, but if you are, then just if, keep it, that in if mind. you are suffering from diarrhea, maybe you should increase your bone consumption. I don't know. That brought to mind some additional bonus tips. Bonus tip. Bonus tips. The first bonus tip is to chew through your food more. So give your body a break in the whole digestion and do some of the work for it. Let's cover the um, scale for eating. Okay, we've, we've covered we've this before. We've developed a new scale. In case you forgot, so on the one side, you've got a, you've got a smanger. So this is like Nellie and Gus. They smang their food really quickly. They inhale it. So I think you're wrong here. So smanging and smanging and smoking as a whole is just like, a, it, it, that is a pace. So what we're talking more is present, past, and future tense. Oh, I so wasn't bringing up. So smanging as a whole, like the act of smanging your food is a very fast consumption, man. Like that food's there and then that food's gone. Yeah, right? so you don't want to be on that side of the spectrum. But there, it's, that's not the spectrum itself. Oh, what you want to say is you want to have a low smang rate. Yeah, that's all I was saying. It's low smang rate. Prioritize a low smang rate. Does that make sense? Low smang rate. So tips to reduce your smang rate is to cut up your food into small bits and use mini utensils. I know you guys think that we are probably insane by using mini forks and chopsticks, but these really help us slow down our 
reduce our smang rate. This one actually has sparkles on it. Yeah. So. Okay. So that wraps up our tips. If you are still stumped and none of these tips are gonna help you, you may wanna consider going to actually go see a professional about your digestive issues. Digestion is very important. And if you are struggling for a long period of time, that could lead to a lot of other health issues. Some things that you could consider are going on are IBS, IBD, SIBO, yeast overgrowth, and the best way to find out if this is occurring is to get a stool test done, and you can usually get that done through like a naturopathic doctor. Keep in mind that these tests are actually really expensive, so I would highly recommend going through these nine topics, the nine tips that we already stated, and trying them all out. Also, just making sure that your diet is on point. If you are slipping off of keto or carnivore, that could be really confusing your body. So before you spend a lot of money on these tests, make sure you are hitting all of those points first. We did want to bring up one temporary relief option. So if you are still really struggling with constipation right now and it's been like more than, what would you say, <laughs> six, seven days without pooping, that's not good. You know, your body's heart, we like to say that your body is becoming a poop hotel. Yep. And it's expending energy by housing that poop. It's using your energy yeah. to keep that poop in your body and it's not good to keep that it's really poop in there. It's pleasing its guts. It is. So one thing that you can do for temporary relief is to consume magnesium citrate. To be honest, I have used this in the past to get a full release out. And so we buy these like magnesium citrate bottles from you know, Walgreens, CVS Pharmacy. They're flavored and they have sucralose. Not good. But if we drink the whole bottle, we experience a full release of our digestive system within eight-ish hours. It just depends. It depends. You could also just try natural calm yeah that is a form of, that is magnesium titrate so this is just our recommended temporary temporary do relief. not rely on this if it's been a while and you are really backed up that's very unhealthy yeah. to let that happen for 23 days i i use magnesium citrate at the end of it oh god i no longer have to rely on magnesium citrate now which no. is amazing but i have used it in the past when it comes to other things though i would definitely avoid random other laxatives like Miralax or psyllium husk, adding more fiber. Yes, and definitely don't do the magnesium citrate more than once and then see about going from there. Don't repeatedly use these things. That's not going to get you in a good routine whatsoever. Well, that's about wraps up today's poop talk. Hope you guys enjoyed this poop talk. Okay, discussion hat is now off and we're going to put on vlogging hat. Vlogging And we're gonna go get a workout in and vlogging whatever hats. else happens. <laughs> Let's get started. All right, so it is time for us to get a lift in, but we're gonna be honest, we've been pacing back in the house for probably 10, 15 minutes, just <clears> holding <throat> off the start of our lift. if we could pretend that we lifted today. <laughs> it's definitely harder <laughs> to get your workouts in when you don't go to a gym. There's just something about being at a gym, the people around you is like motivating. But we have found at home, the hardest part is just starting. And once you actually get into the workout, it's like smooth sailing. Yeah, it's then. fun. But like actually getting in the garage, just like it's cold. Yeah. It's tough. It is. I, so yeah. if you are someone that is struggling with motivating yourself to get going, this is a message to you. Just start. Let's go. Join put us I, right now. Ask me is putting on the tunes. So the bumping tunes. By the way, the music we put over our lifts is not the music we actually listen to. No. We have to use like no copyright music. Yeah, but um, it's bumping, yeah. best you believe. So put on your bumping music. In addition to the tunes, for all you ladies out there, high side okay. ponies. These you hit, your, you hit me with this like seven times, and then these mot these motivate me. So like I have a high side pony. So like now it's time to lift. Let's go.
workout pretty good? Pretty yeah, good? Pretty good. good? So I think during this quarantine time, we all do not have access to a gym. So I'm not doing as much strength training because we just simply don't have heavy weights. And so instead, we're using this time to work on things that we're not good at. So we're implementing zone two cardio because we suck at running. And you know what? Guess what we're doing today? Sprints. We're gonna go, we're gonna go sprint. sprint. Not anything like crazy. Like honestly, we'll probably last like three sprints. Yeah, but it's something that we have not that. done in over a year and the reason that I am like almost afraid of sprints is because I, I have noticed that it affects my joints so it like makes my knees and ankles kind of sore which then will impact my strength training so I don't normally like to mix those two but since we're not strength training right now in our garage gym this is like a perfect time to work on things we're not good at so maybe we'll show some foot footage of the sprints it may be a little embarrassing I don't know what you think no? No. Okay, we're not. that these tips will be helpful for you if you are struggling with digestion give it time and have patience with your body that's going to help while you're here make sure you hit the like and subscribe button to stay tuned for future videos but until next time behave, behave like, like an angel, angel.